So I would like to make a motion at this point um, to nominate uh, Treasurer Van Oss to run the township meeting for Monday, January 27th, 2020. Support. Support. Okay, we'll give the second to Mr. Budney. And um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. The motion carries. Mr. Van Oss, the Thank you, mallet is yours. <laughs> That's the last time you'll hear that tonight. Uh, <clears throat> we'll start out with additions or deletions to the agenda. Not hearing any, uh, I'll take a motion to approve the agenda as written. So move. A second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, motion carried. Uh, at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Chief Murdoch for some presentations, Chief. How's the board tonight? Go ahead. Well, thank uh, you. After that exhausting study, study <laughs> session. <laughs> Works out, yeah. Uh, real quick, uh, I'm struggling a little bit tonight with my hearing. Both my hearing aids are in the shop getting repaired, so if, if I don't quite hear you, I know I'll get, a, I'll get yelled at by my sister sitting back here in the corner, so, but uh, uh, thank you for having me tonight. It's kind of a very important night for uh, the Grosio Fire Department. I'm gonna start off tonight with uh, some commendations on a uh, life save that we had a few months back, uh, which was kind of important to all of us and the community. Uh, the gentleman that we took care of that afternoon, uh, we all know, uh, I went to school with him. I went to school with his wife. Um, it, uh, it made us all uneasy, made me very uneasy to see this situation take place. But the outcome, of course, was uh, fantastic. Uh, the gentleman is here tonight. Uh, I know he would like to maybe speak tonight. I'm not sure yet. So um, I would like him to. So, but uh, it was a great save. Uh, there was a gentleman, if it's okay with him, I'd like to speak to the event. Is that okay? Uh, we got called out in the evening on a uh, man down, not breathing. And when we got there, there was a uh, gentleman in cardiac arrest, not breathing. And of course, public safety, along with police and fire, uh, did a remarkable job. Uh, police arrived on scene first. Uh, they did the necessary things they needed to do to help this patient sustain his life. Uh, my members of the department showed up on scene uh, shortly after that. Uh, took it to a next level, uh, transported or moved him to the ambulance, transported him, more medical attention to the hospital, and this gentleman was eventually released from the hospital, walking, talking, and giving his kids a run for their money, and I hope grandkids. So um, I would like, uh, if I could, indulge me a little bit. I got a lot on my mind tonight. I'd like uh, uh, Richard Brower, Ted Coldplay, Jake Gonzalez, Charlie Lawler, uh, uh, Rusty Boudry, Lenny Pedestris, and Officers Benson and Boudry. I know Benson couldn't be here tonight. He's on vacation with his wife. I know uh, Mark, the police chief, will accept his, uh, war, his uh, letter of recognition for this life save. So you guys want to come up? So if you'd like, stand right behind me so they all can see. And I'm going to read the, the commendation real quick. Um, this is from the Grozio Fire Department, the life-saving commendation. On, October, on Wednesday, October 1st, 2019, at 6.42 p.m., firefighters Brower, Coplay, Gonzalez, Lawler, Boudry, Pedestris, Officers Benson and Boudry, there's two Boudrys in there, so were dispatched to 8626 Sarah Lane on a report man down not breathing. Whereas upon arrival, firefighters Brower, Coplay, Gonzalez, Lawler, Boudry, and pedestrians found police officers Benson Boudry performing CPR and had applied the AED. Fire, firefighters Brower, Coplay, Gonzalez, Lawler, <laughs> Boudry, and pedestrians, along with police officers Benson and Boudry, used their knowledge and skill in medical training. Medical procedures were performed and the patient was moved to the ambulance for further medical treatment and transported. Grozio Fire Department, along with the Grozio Police Department, transported this patient to South Shore Medical Center for further me medical treatment, where the patient was released and now recovering at home. Fire Chief Duncan Murdoch and the Grozio Fire Commission hereby award life-saving commendations to firefighters uh, Brower, Coplay, Gonzalez, Lawler, Boudry, Pedestris, Benson, and Boudry for their professional conduct in the finest tradition of the Grozio Fire Department, dated 
the 27th of January, 2020. So I'm gonna pass these out if I could. <laughs> Just to let you know, when you have a life save, there's a particular uh, ribbon. It's kind of like the military. Uh, it is in the fire and police service. Uh, this is a, a ribbon of, uh, of life saves for these men. And uh, very, very proud of them on how they handled this. They're hard to come by. Uh huh? They're hard to come by. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're hard to come by. Uh, the, the ones I'm passing out first are my officers. They, they come in gold. Remember that, guys. There's the, there's the gold. Okay. I'm sorry? What's he want me to do? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so. This one's for uh, AJ, Mark. Congratulations. Thank Richard. you, sir. I'm shaking like a leaf, aren't I? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Great job, guys. Lenny? I expect you to wear these at our, Thank you, our functions. Chief, so. what metal are the ones that you're giving out now? They're silver. These are silver. Same looking metal, but silver. So, Ray, thank you very much. Thank you. We work great with the police department. I want everybody to know that, so. Ted, thank you, sir. Jake, one of our newest guys. He got, a, he got a life save early on in his career, so it's, it was excellent. So I just, just to let the public know that uh, Grozio Fire Department in and itself is working with less manpower than it did 10 years ago by about 10, 12 guys and with more calls. So these men and women, we definitely had a, a woman on the fire department, is they're doing more and we're doing it with less people. So, and they're doing a great job at it. So I appreciate all their hard work. It's a pleasure working with these guys. Um, and I look forward to some more years with them. So thanks guys. Yeah, thank you. Chief Duncan. While, while we're waiting, I think I just want to say on behalf of the community and the board, it's an honor to know we have people like you who are willing to put your lives on the line to save other lives. It's very, very important to a community. Look, I'll, I'll be up here, so. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know what to talk to you guys <laughs> how to address this, but. I moved, I moved. Please, please speak into the microphone so that the when camera was, can pick uh, you up for the people watching at home. 1960, and uh, my paper route was uh, East River from Ferry to Parkway and Macomb and Grays Drive. My first wage-paying job, I hired in the same week as Dave Hill <laughs> at Roger Highland Shell Station on the corner of Macomb. Wow. And... Uh, Graduated from Grozeal and uh, raised my family here, and I'm I'm so glad to have this opportunity to, uh, as you said, see my grandchildren, and uh, watch my daughter get married on Friday. Uh, I I can't repay the team, but I'll try to pay it forward. Um, it's a pretty amazing thing to look up and find yourself in the ICU and have no clue about the events that went on in between. My wife's and my daughter Abigail's prompt action uh, when they made the phone call, they hung up the phone and heard the sirens. They turned around and there was a patrolman in the yard. It, it was all so prompt and certainly the great work by the catheter lab at South Shore uh, uh, confessions here. I had a stress test today. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that notwithstanding, I continue to pay a lot of attention to things uh, I never knew about. Mm -hmm. uh, my life is, uh, I certainly look at things in a different way. 
I don't know what to say about the crew. I, I heard the list. Maybe I'll read the minutes and get the names officially somewhere. But, well, but, you, you but I don't think the names matter. There were a dozen guys in the street, and there were, you, you couldn't all be behind there. I, I knew so many of them, and as I was discharged, I, I walked out and waited on the bench in front of South Shore, and Charlie Lawler was there <laughs> and gave me all the things that I, uh, I had no idea about. I'm, I'm, you have uh, what they say is a life debt, so thank you to all. Right, thanks. Oh, okay, next on the, it's me again. Uh, Kurt and South Shore. Jerry. Um, kind of give you a heads up. Uh, I know we talked about the life pack a few months, months ago, and I was looking to possibly purchase some. I was looking to buy one, too. We didn't know. Um, I met with, at first, I had met with Henry Ford Wyandotte looking to see if I could convince the, the hospital to buy us one or two, maybe help us out a little bit. And that actually went very well with Dr. McEwen at uh, the emergency room. But I think he ran into a few roadblocks at uh, South Shore, and it was, uh, it was taking a little too long for me. And as everybody knows anything about me, I'm not the patient man that I seem to be right now. But... Uh, I did, we had a commission meeting a few months back and uh, Kurt and I were talking, we were talking about the life packs and, um, and said, you know, is any influence over there? And of course, Kurt Koblack, met, he, he had contacts and he made some contacts and we started uh, reviewing this project and uh, just to let you know, South Shore Beaumont uh, came through with one and then Kurt called him back and said, well, I kind of made a mistake, we really need two. And, they came through, and they came through to a tune of, and correct me if I'm wrong, Natasha, about $64,000 in equipment that was donated to Grosio Fire Department. And it's just kind of falling in line with what's going on in our industry right now. Uh, uh, our med control for the County of Wayne is now allowing our type of department to start pushing epi when it comes to cardiac of conversions, which is going to be huge in what we do. So that, that dilation and making everything open up plus cardiac conversion, we're probably going to start saving some more lives. So it's, it's huge what South Shore did. So, but I'm going to have Kurt speak to a little bit to this, how this project came down. And again, as Duncan indicated, um, obviously what you want is you want a good uh, corporate neighbor. And when we first built South Shore, it was a $150 investment from Oakwood Hospital. That was incredible. Clearly, Beaumont's continuing that tradition. Um, the fact that I called and they didn't blink an eye, and when I called the second time and she didn't blink an eye again, um, it's going to benefit the community, it's going to benefit our residents uh, and our fire department. So we appreciate everything you've done. And I, again, if you can say a little bit about it and the sure. purpose, that'd be great. Sure. Um, hi, my name is Natasha. I'm an administrator at Beaumont Trenton, known as um, South Shore as well. Um, but really, most importantly, I've been an emergency department nurse for um, almost 17 years. So I have gotten to witness um, a machine like this uh, in action many times throughout my career. And despite that, I still get um, the goosebumps and teary-eyed listening to stories um, like this one. And that's exactly what this machine is for. It allows you to monitor a patient, um, administer life-saving medications if needed, provide life-saving um, defibrillation for patients so that, um, so that they can stand here like our gentleman is standing here today and participating more fully in the, in the rest of his life and his family's life. So um, we are honored um, to partner with Gross Hill Fire. We are proud of this partnership that we have in our community and be able to serve um, the communities of Gross Hill because that's what we're here for is ultimately to, um, to serve our patients in our community. So thank you so much for inviting me to be here today. Thank you. Natasha, just for the record, for putting in the minutes, can sure. you give Ryan your last name? Sure, it's Barney, like the dinosaur. <laughs> Very easy to spell. <laughs> thank you. And thank you. Absolutely, it's our pleasure. So, it, like she said, this has been a huge, huge 
commitment that uh, South Shore put upon us, and uh, we appreciate what they've done for us. And uh, it's definitely improving uh, the way of life here on Grozeal when it comes to how we administer our medical tr uh, treatment to our residents. So it's huge, and I appreciate everything you guys have done. So uh, this is this is huge. So I appreciate it. Kurt, Thanks. Kurt I just want to say thank you. Thank you. You've done an awful lot for this community. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Kurt. Duncan, will these be located on the ambulances? Yes. Or? Okay. That's why Kurt had to go after two, <laughs> because we got two ambulances. Gotcha. Two rigs, not one. Well, so yeah, well, she, she didn't call up and say you need to sell one, so. <laughs> so, but no, it was, it's a huge commitment. I mean, 60-some thousand dollars to a community is, yeah, it's a commitment, so. But that's where we go. We're close. Right. Thank so. you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks guys. all of you. Thanks. Thank you. I did dunk. <laughs> Boy, when I come to a meeting, I come big, don't I? You do. You do. <laughs> um, the next project is uh, the uh, the building of a outbuilding or a garage for the Grozeal Fire Department and Police Department. Um, just a little background: uh, this project started. I, w I was talking with Jim and, and, and Mr. Bletcher in reference to this, and it dates back to about 2010 when I started looking at projects. Am I missing something? Uh, oh, yeah, I'm, I w I would. I'm too early. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. You, you came big. You came stuff. big. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Don. Uh, I would like to uh, take this time for a brief public comment for anything that's on the action on the agenda. Uh, if anybody would like to step forward and speak about an agenda item. Seeing none, uh, we'll move on. We have one. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Yes. Okay, and please be so kind just to give your name and address for the record. Record, permanent record. Permanent record. Uh, Ruth Clemens, 9167 Dallas. Thank you. I'm late. I just want to say to you guys, thank you very much. It means a great deal to me. I'm sorry I missed the whole thing, but you guys are the best. And I appreciate it. On behalf of my family. Oh, okay. Oh. Thank you, dear. <laughs> What's your name? Tom Sorty, Sarah Lane. <laughs> so, Duncan, this is public comment, right? Yeah. I'm a resident last time I checked. Um, Duncan's had his opportunity to provide his uh, accommodations. David said his thank yous. Ruth said her thank yous. So, on behalf of the, sorry, on behalf of the rest of us that call David our friend, I just want to say, and I'm confident I have the authority to, act, to speak on their behalf. You guys know how much I think of our police and fire department working in the other communities that I do, and um, I just. I, I, I've spoken to many of them, and I just want to publicly say, on behalf of all those people, thank you guys. Um, Grozeal is a wonderful place to live. Thanks, Tom. Anybody else? <coughs> all right, hearing none, we'll move on to the uh, consent agenda, Jim. Yeah, I uh, would like to make. Approval of the minutes. Yep. That's in the consent agenda. Go ahead, Jim. Ah, yeah. The, uh, I, I'd like to have a motion to approve the consent agenda 19-081, which consists of the minutes of January 13th, 2020, regular meeting, and the check register uh, registers dated through January 24th, 2020. Need a motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> None here. Motion carried. We'll move right into our action items. Uh, the first action item is the uh, police and fire garage. Now it's your turn, Dunk. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> I have to read the. <laughs> <laughs> um, you got to do the motion. Oh, I yep. have to read the motion. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, the proposed motion is to authorize the fire commission and fire chief to award a bid to J.G. Morris Jr. and company 
in the amount of $387,922 for the construction of a new garage on the, on the public safety building site. Support. We have a motion to support. Uh, Duncan. Uh, yes, this, uh, like I was, I was talking out of turn, but this project started long, long time ago in reference to uh, the need for storage, storage space for the equipment we have. Um, as you well know, over the course of the last 15, 20 years, the Groziel Fire Department has taken on a lot more responsibilities from the time when the building was built back in 1990, uh, when we thought the building was going to serve us greatly for the next 30 years, which it has. Um, but well, more importantly, Groziel Fire Department is taking on uh, a large role in taking care of the people that travel our waterways, uh, duck hunters, fishermen, ice fishermen, and then just, just general recreation boating. Um, we are now heavily involved in water and ice rescue. Um, and that has kind of morphed into a, uh, a huge, huge part of what we do as Grosse Hill Fire Department and Grosse Hill Firefighters. Um, that being said, we have no room for what water rescue equipment we have. And just kind of give you an overview of what we have. We have a water rescue trailer with two boats and motors and, and miscellaneous equipment on it. We have an airboat that we purchased back in 2006. Um, we did just put into service an um, active assailant trailer that we spent on last year, a year ago or so. Uh, that's, it, that's in the building. We have a uh, pursuit for water rescue. And the, we also house the uh, Downriver Mutual Aid dive team trailer. And that's because Grosse Hill Fire Department has the biggest contingent of men on the dive team. So it only makes sense they get to the station, get the trailer, and go where I have to go. But for the most part, most of our, our water rescues or ice water rescues are along the Detroit River, Livingston Channel, and all that kind of stuff. So it only made sense to, to keep it housed out here. Well, that being said, the trailer cost uh, the, the residents of uh, the Down River $83,000, not counting the equipment that's inside. So if you take and look at the overall picture of our water rescue team, our, our investment as a community and as a Down River into our water rescue equipment is probably a half a million dollars, if not greater. And you really can't leave this equipment seat sitting outside, especially dive tanks, you know, uh, all the dive equipment that goes with it, the boats you really want to keep in inside and keep them ready to go. So, but this is all sitting out in the weather right now. And the current condition of the current fire station, the back three bays of our fire station are packed. There's one, two, three, four, five pieces of equipment packed into a three bay area. So as you, as, you, as you hear, there's no room for movement uh, from a, a manpower standpoint. And it, like the, one of the big things for us, we used to roll hose, pull a fire truck out in front of the building, and then we could roll hose all the way through the building and start loading it. The weather was inclement, and it was just not, we couldn't do it outside. So we've lost all that, those abilities. So after many years of looking at this project, uh, the, you know, when the economy kind of, went down for us a little bit. Uh, we went ahead and put this on hold for a while, but we're back in front of it again, and we really need to do something about this, this getting this equipment housed. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to starting this project, if you approve it. Uh, I know the contractor, we had three bids. If you wanted me to speak to those bids, we had bids that ranged from 287000 all the way to over 600000 um, Obviously, 600000 was definitely out of the question, but uh, we did take low bid, and uh, I did review uh, some of his projects throughout the Down River, and I've gotten good feedback for now. So I've gotten it now. So, but uh, I'm looking forward to getting this project going and getting this stuff housed before winter. I know I will be coming back to you shortly after that because we are uh, removing and have to relocate 14 car spaces for the squad cars. We are, we're taking those over, so we have to relocate them. Do we have the space? Yes. So, but it, it, I have to go out for engineering on that project, too, so, and get that moving. So we'd like to get that done before the snow flies. <coughs> so. Thank you, Duncan. Uh, we had a study session for a half hour. Does any of the board have any other questions or comments? I do. I, oh, go ahead, Tom. Go ahead. All right. Uh, thanks. I've, I've been uh, 
I've been quiet on this uh, tonight, uh, mainly because uh, Chief Murdoch is the best, uh, he's our best source of information. He's been working on this for a number of years. I want everybody to understand that our uh, fire commission, made up of Jerry Bringard, Dallas Kelsey, Kurt Kobiak, myself, being a liaison, uh, as well as Russ Beaudry, who uh, is at our meetings, is, uh, unanimously, uh, is in unanimous approval of this project. Um, yes, the, uh, the, the current fire bays are, are filled with equipment, and uh, anytime they, they need to do something, they have to move equipment out to make room so the men can do their, their maintenance on their trucks. Uh, this building is a no frills building. It will, have, it will have heat and it will have electricity, and uh, it's not meant for anything else. There will be no restroom facilities, uh, shower, anything like that. It is a storage facility. To, uh, to house our equipment, which, as Chief has made very uh, apparent, is very expensive equipment. And uh, it's something that I know that the Chief and myself have talked about for a number of years. Uh, as he said, they, they's put it on, they've delayed it for a while. And uh, I know he's talked to a number of contractors, a number of different types of people, uh, making a decision what type of a structure to put up. This is a stick and, stick and frame building. It's, there's nothing special about it. Uh, it'll be attractive. It's gonna. It'll. It'll blend. You know, blend in with the current buildings that are there, but uh, to be just to be sure, uh, the uh, the fire commission itself is unanimous. You know, approving it, and uh, it's going to be put to very good use. Uh, it's. It may be the this equipment may be uh, an investment of the fire department, but ultimately it's an investment of the residents of this island. This is your equipment. And you expect uh, you would expect the fire department to maintain it, and uh, the police as well, to uh, to maintain it uh, in top-notch condition. Keeping it undercover will allow them; it'll 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 make the job easier. Um, so I just just wanted you to know that we're all in approval on it, and I would appreciate the you know uh, the board uh, vote in favor of it and uh, allow the chief to get started. Anybody else? Yeah. Well, one one last thing. I guess. <laughs> I, I, I apologize for that. This, this is the packet that the chief put together. It's over a quarter inch thick. It has every document in there that you would expect uh, of a project of this type to, you know, to be presented to us at a project of this type. But uh, chief has really done his homework. Everything's right here. Uh, there's really any questions that need to be answered is is literally covered in this packet that uh, chief has given us. So uh, with that, I'll uh, I'll give it up again. <laughs> Jim, go ahead. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I've been I've been hearing about this project uh, for seven years, and I'm just pleased that we're finally finally uh, able to move forward on it. Uh, uh, there'll be we were talking in our study session, well over half a million dollars worth of equipment is going to be in that building that's sitting outside or jammed into the fire station right now. So uh, it, it's it, it's something that's well worth doing. Well, yes, uh, Mr. Treasurer, uh, as the liaison to the police department, I've had an opportunity to discuss this with police management. Uh, Chief Warnock wholeheartedly endorses this. Um, it is about public safety. It is about doing the right thing to be prepared for the community. Uh, Mark, I want to thank you for that. Um, as been stated many, many times over many years. Public safety, it's not fire, it's not police, it's public safety, and it is wonderful that the two departments and the two chiefs can work together. Uh, I know that uh, this has been a project that was discussed as far back as Chief Barron, Chief Porcerelli, Chief Warnick. This has been in process, in my recollection, about 10 years now when we spoke earlier, Duncan, and um, it's long, long overdue. It has been a wonderful, wonderful project to be able to protect and help people in need. I do note, um, and I've lived here all my life, but it seems to me the last decade, and correct me if I'm wrong, Chief, but we seem to have more water rescues in the last 10 years than we have in the last 30 years combined. I and mean, we're seeing people out by the Detroit light, you're picking up the goose hunters. It strikes me that every season now we have more and more rescues, and it's not just the summer, it's the spring and the fall as well, and, and gosh, even cold now. Um, we've had rescues off of a south end of a Ford Yacht Club. So I look at those kinds of things. The numbers are there. 
it's not just one or two people as it might have been in the 70s or even the 80s. We just see more and more of this. My only regret, and it's a big one, I support the project, is that I have to abstain from the vote because one of the bidders has been a client of mine, and I don't feel comfortable even making that disclosure that uh, I would go ahead and, and vote on that. Um, I just believe it is a conflict of interest, and it is certainly a conflict with my, um, with my values and principles. So, Chief, I support you. The police department supports you. I think the board's going to support you. I just wished I could vote for it. But you have my full faith and confidence in everything that you and the gentleman and the lady do. It's been terrific, and thank you as a recipient of some services within my family and neighbors. Thank you all for the job that you do. Else? Duncan, uh, you've picked me up probably a couple times uh, from my uh, residence. And as you get older, uh, you, you begin to appreciate what you guys do and all that stuff. I remember back when I was a kid, there was an ambulance next door. The ambulance pulls up, and they throw the person in the back ambulance and try to drive to the hospital, and they die on the way there. It's amazing how far this has come, and I'm so happy that we have you and your guys doing a great job. Thank you. Thank Not you. about the garage now, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Right. Paul, not to be outspoken, <laughs> right, Duncan? I think it's an excellent project. You've done a lot of homework. I think the uh, board has made clear how much they support um, you and your department. But that all being said, I also want to add that even though this is an old project and long mm -hmm. talked about, that it really serves the residents of Gross Eel now. You know, this is equipment that they bought with our millage funds, and this is equipment that is helping save our lives, that is making our life better and safer on the island, and it needs to be taken care of, and it shouldn't all be shoved into one little uh, space. Um, we need you to feel safe in that workspace that you have. So, but I just wanted um, to kind of highlight that even though this is a long-standing project, it serves the people of Gross Ill now, and um, I'm very glad to be able to support it. I just have a little little tidbit, and if it's okay, Dave, I'm going to throw it in. Uh, the, the, the evening of his event is he was cutting lawn, and which I don't do. Don't cut lawn, Dave. Hire that done, okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were, th he was cutting lawn, and just, and correct me if I'm wrong, but <clears throat> the fire department went ahead and finished cutting the lawn and put his lawn order away. All right. So t uh, we, we're, t we're talking major service here. <laughs> I don't know who cut it. Kevin. Kevin Langley cut it? Yeah, so, hey, we're a full service fire department. You need, you need your lawn cut, that's time to call us. Well, <laughs> so. you can cut mine anytime, but I don't want to have a heart attack. Come on down, guys. <laughs> so. All right. Uh, we've got a motion. We have a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, hearing none, we have one abstention. Thank you, Duncan. Great presentation. Our next pub, uh, action item is uh, Mr. Budney. Yes. Uh, no, we'll let the guys get out. Thanks, guys. It was for, for a while, yeah. <laughs> we'll take anything we can get. <laughs> Broke his front tooth when we were sailing back when we were in our 20s. <laughs> With Ron Kachowski up at Grosse oh. Hill and... Uh, and, and Counselor, wherever he went, uh, is my neighbor across the street. I mean, this is this is such a place. For all the guys in the room. I'm a hug guy. <laughs> <laughs> all right.
Great, Jim. All right. All right. Uh, based upon the recommendation by the Department of Community Development, we're asking the Groziel Township Board hereby approve compensation for the appointed position of hearing officer as defined in Chapter 44, Dangerous Buildings. The compensation for this position shall be $35 per meeting or inspection, further defined in the attached uh, professional service agreement attached to this motion. Approval is contingent upon review of the attached professional service agreement by the Township Legal Council. Support. And I'll ask Derek to come up. Uh, Derek is the head of the uh, uh, Department of Community Development. Yeah, tough act to follow here. Yeah. Uh, not, not quite as exciting as the, the latter, but uh, I'll try to do my best yeah, to answer questions. I noticed your packet is a little Yeah, not quite as thick. We're not uh, building buildings, but uh, <laughs> nonetheless, uh, it was important enough to make sure it was on the agenda for this evening, and I appreciate your consideration. Would you like me to explain it any yeah, further? Yeah, please. Sure. Yeah. Um, what it's all about. So we, do, we don't uh, normally have many dangerous buildings um, designations uh, year over year. Uh, I think this year, this past year, was probably the most we ever had at four. Uh, they came before the, the township board here a couple of months ago. Um, during the course of the dangerous buildings designation, uh, the uh, township via ordinance has a dangerous buildings officer that dangerous buildings officer walks the um, basically the process through the steps that are in the ordinance uh, the position is an appointed position by the uh, township supervisor um, and currently isn't afforded uh, any compensation for the, uh, the the time or efforts that are involved in that process uh, this individual has to be uh, somebody uh, that is skilled in the field of building um, in the building trades so that they have the necessary knowledge to determine um, whether the building is unsafe and then also have an understanding of whether the house um, or the structure can be rehabilitated if it's gone too far, um, how long, what's reasonable for repairs, what needs to be repaired. So it's a fairly skilled position that, that uh, the supervisor uh, appoints an individual for. Um, what we're asking for is just a uh, compensation for that individual's time to cover cost. Um, our building officials, our building inspectors currently receive $35 uh, per inspection uh, for, uh, let's say if you're putting in a furnace or whatever it might be, um, that's what we pay them. They're all part-time. Uh, what we're suggesting and what we're asking for is a similar compensation level for this individual. And as far as an order of magnitude, uh, we average probably about one per year and uh, four meetings or four inspections, a combination of inspections and meetings totals four on a given basis for um, any specific property. So you're really looking at about $140 for each one of these uh, events. So it's um, not something that uh, is going to make or break our budget, but at least we'll ensure that the individual's costs are covered and then uh, we do currently have a, a dangerous buildings hearing officer but if that individual uh, is no longer interested in providing those services um, at least it'll be able to give us um, uh, at least a, uh, an opportunity to provide some level of compensation for any individual that might apply for that and be appointed in that position that way we're ensured that we're going to get hopefully a, a good applicant pool if uh, the position ever needs to be refilled so that's the long and short of it. I, I, if I may, I just, I, I just want to add that it is not, uh, and, and uh, Derek alluded to it, it's when this comes up, there is time spent. Uh, it's not a, a quick process. It's not something that the dangerous building uh, or the hearing officer is a, a, his official title uh, he doesn't. He doesn't come up with this. This is this is the the building department, the community development department, that would come up with this. But then he has to carry carry through with inspections and meetings, and he does spend some time and uh, uh, has has some costs going back and forth uh, in, involved. So I think I think this is a fair fair uh, way to handle it. That's a very good point. These hearings. Um, these meetings, the, the correspondence that's set, um, that's all at our request of this individual. So it's not, uh, not work that is generated by them, but work that is generated by our department 
um, basically acting on the will of the residents um, in trying to address a blighted or dangerous building that's impacting our neighborhoods. So, yes. Sure. Derek. Oh, excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Treasurer. Um, so uh, just two quick questions, because this year we did, um, earlier this year, well, actually, no, late last year, we went through um, a, quite a list of some properties that were being demolished or in the process of being demolished. And just for, for the record, the dangerous buildings officer is a part of making that happen, identifying structures that are no longer sound. So when that finally comes to the board, that's part of where it started. That is correct. And then my second question to you is, so um, out of which pool, a lot of what you do in Department of Community Development comes out of user fees, so building permits and so forth, where does the, um, where's the cost center for, where's the money come from for um, this uh, payment? So the um, listed under the action item, um, Community Development has a account that we take our inspector fees from. So that's where those dollars would come out of. Um, and potentially these fees would also potentially be reimbursable underneath our um, arrangement. When we d demolish a property, we can put cost on taxes or our, can ask for reimbursement. So there's that potential as well. So we, I've got to talk with Tom about that, whether this would be eligible as well, but that is a possibility. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, I had a, uh, I've had a conversation with uh, Trustee Bundy in regards to this. Uh, I had a couple questions for you. Sure. How is or who initiates uh, a call where you, where you bring in uh, this person to inspect the building? How, how, does that, how does that come to you? So normally it would be something either the ordinance officer recognizes as a dangerous building or we'll get a resident complaint. At that point, we'll go on site to the location with normally the building inspector, review the property to see if it is of issue, and at that point, we would um, get the dangerous buildings hearing officer involved to conduct the necessary hearings and go through the process with the resident to address uh, these perceived violations or perceived issues with the structure. Once the um, our, our ordinance officer in, inspects, it sees this building, makes a suggestion to you that we bring in the dangerous building. There, the building inspector is involved okay. primarily. So, but a lot of times when we receive complaints from neighbors. Or okay. our so it, com it comes into you. Right. So you initiate it comes it comes to you, and then you you contact him and you tell him you want him to. What what is is the expected length of time it takes for him to once once he's heard from you to uh, to do that inspection? It's a uh, it's a pretty regimented um, process. Um, the ordinance outlines the dangerous buildings process. So there's notification that has to go to the homeowner. An inspection has to occur. Then a hearing has to be held, and all of those are regimented and scheduled within the dangerous, dangerous buildings hearing process. Um, from if your question is from beginning to end, what that resolution is, I, I would say anywhere between four and eight months. But there are a variety of challenges depending upon the building that you're talking about. Commercial structures might have more <coughs> more issue that you have to work through, whether it's title or whether there's uh, asbestos. Um, residential properties are a little bit more simple, but those aren't without their complications. Yeah, I, I was looking at is just because I, I, I have a disagreement with my neighbor and I call you up, uh, I'm not, within the next month, there's not gonna be nope. somebody out there. Okay, nope. there is a process that this, this whole thing takes. There, there is a process and it's intentional. Um, you know, the township doesn't wanna get involved with um, demanding that a property, a private property is demolished. So the individual is given a lot of time through the process to try to address the problems that we've seen um, and that the dangerous buildings hearing officer and also the building inspector have identified. So yes, to your point, it's not a month process. It's generally not a four month process. It's more to like a six to eight month process. And part of the reason I ask this is that uh, it wasn't that long ago there was a, uh, uh, there were some appeals as to some, some properties that were condemned and were gonna be torn down. So that this all leads up to something like that. Sure. It's, it isn't just a, a phone call and... Not a phone call and a, we demand the property is okay. down. Nothing like that. All right. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? 
Mr. Treasurer, I have a question. Uh, Jim, maybe, Jim Bundy, you can help me on this. We had the Rio Road Apartments. Is it the same person that uh, spent all of the time on that project that's going to continue same, with this? Same individual. We have, we have one, one uh, dangerous building officer or hearing officer. He, whether it's Rio Road or whether it's a, 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 just a, a, a little shack, uh, that's the gentleman or the individual that does it. So it's not a new person or a successor, oh, no. it's the same one? No, this is, no, this is, uh, this is not really changing the person at all. We have the person. Uh, this will just be adding something new to his, uh, an aspect of his uh, duties. That's correct. Thank you. We have a motion, we have a second. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Derek. Thank Appreciate you. It. Jim, thank you for bringing that. <clears throat> uh, we'll move on to the clerk's report. Thank you, Mr. Treasurer. Um, the first item for the clerk's report is that the absentee ballots are now available for the March 10th, 2020 presidential primary. Uh, voters will have a choice of three different ballots. You will have a choice of three different ballots at the precincts as well as when you request an absentee voter ballot. It will be either a Republican ballot, a Democratic ballot, or a proposal only ballot. All the ballots will have two proposals, one for Gross Eel School Sinking Fund, a millage, and one for Wayne County Art Authority. For those of you who've already submitted an application to receive an absent voter ballot, those ballots will be mailed out to you next week. So in light of that, um, and I'm hoping Mike and Lori in the booth can f uh, focus in on these ballots uh, as I show them, you will be used to receiving ballots that looked like this, an absentee ballot envelope that was in this dark manila color and a return envelope that was the same color, just slightly smaller. Those ballots no longer will be used and have been replaced by this, these two ballots. So the blue ballot will be the one that you receive your absent voter ballots in, and the green one is the one that you will use to return them. The reason we're making such a big deal out of this is a lot of times when people see these the first time, they say it looks like junk mail, and it might look like a flyer or something you receive uh, that you're not going to open. And so we just want to make sure that if you've ordered an absent voter ballot, that you know that you're expecting a blue and white envelope and that you will be returning a green and white envelope. And we are putting all of this out on our app, on our website, and any other media, Facebook, et cetera, that um, we can get our paws on. So another item I'd like to draw to your attention is that um, in 2020, this is an election year for the township board. And so the entire board will be up for election. And the packets that you will request are like this. They're just a gray envelope. They say, township candidate packet and it has all the information you need to um, submit the paperwork to run for any of the township offices. The offices that are open are township supervisor, township treasurer, township clerk, and there are four township trustees. Um, so those are basically the items that uh, we have for today's report. Um, Brian, is there anything you would like to add? Okay. Um, we are working with our um, app and with our website um, to investigate uh, how easy or difficult it may be for residents to file a complaint uh, with the township. And so we're hoping to make it easy uh, that when you um, go on our website, on our app, you can simply fill out an online form about something that you notice that needs to be handled, whether it's a pothole in the road or a dangerous building, and that that will then automatically be sent or directed to the department that will handle that. 
And so we're trying to uh, facilitate that process. The same on our app and websites, you are now able to uh, um, make FOIA requests and they are then t um, automatically directed to the FOIA director who will then, who is in the clerk's office, who will then take it to the appropriate department and your request will be fulfilled. Um, that's it for the clerk's report. Thank you. <coughs> for the treasurer's report, uh, for the month of December, Grove Seal had a total of uh, $23,178,629. Obviously, we've had a payday uh, invested in various accounts. Uh, these accounts uh, generated a total of $14,697. In, investor, in investment interest, an average of 1.19%. It's, it's a little better uh, than it has been for sure. Uh, the Gross Hill 2019 winter property tax bills are due February 14th. If you cannot pay your winter tax bill by the due date of February 14th, there is a deferment available for those who qualify. Approved de de deferment applications will defer the payment due until April 30th, but must be submitted to the Treasurer's Office by February 14th. Uh, ap applications are available online and or at my office, and if you have any comments or questions about it, Annette will walk you through the process. Uh, a reminder for those that have filed a summer tax deferment, deferred summer taxes are now due by February 14th. Uh, to date, we've collected 63% of the winter tax rolls, and all distributions to the county and school districts have been made in a timely fashion. The 2020 pet tags are available. Uh, Township Hall, the tag fee is $6 until January 31st, then it increases to $12. Uh, be sure to provide your valid rabies shots uh, when purchasing the tags. Uh, just a, I'll leave that up to Dale. You're going to talk about the damage at the tennis center. So uh, that's all I have. Uh, moving on, we'll, Mr. Nelson. Thanks, Mr. Treasurer. I have uh, four announcements uh, from Kim O'Farrell regarding the uh, recreation department. Number one, the festival and community Events Commission meeting is February 19th at 7 p.m. in this room. The Community Recreation Commission meeting is February the 27th at 6.30 in this room. Friday, February 21st, Mother and Son Bowling, 6.30 to 8 o'clock, $25 per couple, $8 for additional child. The Senior Shopping Day is uh, at Meyer is February 12th. Uh, it is $7 round trip, and if you have any questions, please call 734-675-2364. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Uh, Mr. Bletcher? Mr. Treasurer, I have the pleasure of sitting on three commissions. Reports are as follows for Greenway's open space. You'll notice when you drive Ferry Road on the north side, there have been chips that have been delivered and the trail that reconnects Gage with Fury Road is underway. Again, weather permitting, but those are chips in place and the trail is beginning. Uh, the second matter is that uh, we are having a meeting with uh, neighbors of the uh, Park Lane and uh, north end of the trail that was in Meridian Woods and Park Lane in Manchester specifically. That seems to be spearheaded by Bill Stevenson. Uh, we have tried to have a meeting with the neighbors on site to explore areas for uh, the trail and unfortunately a week and a half ago we were snowed out. You recall that was the, uh, the large snowstorm that fell on Friday night and Saturday morning and uh, last week when Bill and I spoke it was uh, incredibly wet, soggy and a lot of the area was underwater. So that has been deferred indefinitely but the neighbors that have expressed the interest in the placement of the trail um, we'll be notified and uh, through Mr. Stevenson, and we're eventually going to get that project done, weather permitting. Uh, with respect to the Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Commission, we did have a study session in January so that we would be able to lay out our details for going forward with our budget, our plans, 
uh, trying to prioritize uh, work on the uh, bicycle path sy system. Uh, we did uh, do repairs to the bridges uh, that are along the system, primarily on Meridian and on Grow Road. We are now looking at the surface uh, paths as uh, it's about nine miles of uh, paths that we're looking at. And uh, we want to make sure that the surface on that, because it was built in different segments, different times, uh, remains good. And we're going to be doing an inventory on that. Um, BPAC Chairman Brian Pollock has uh, accessed us with some uh, um, tech, the technology and equipment that will allow us to do a pretty thorough job on that and keep the paths safe and in good condition. My third report is for the uh, Grozio Police Commission. And the Police Commission, um, I want to read some annual numbers for you, um, as well as uh, some of the individual uh, statistics. But uh, one thing that is a continuing problem is the feeding of the deer. Um, whether we call it a squirrel feeder or a deer feeder, it is a misdemeanor. Um, it causes feed to be thrown onto the ground where we have moles, mice, and voles that come in, and those are primary attractants for coyotes. So if we could please stop feeding the deer, you will find that you will not have the coyote issue that we've had over the last several years. When I came to a meeting uh, with a supervisor and manager a couple of weeks ago, looked out the window and there was a coyote trotting across the uh, runways and uh, the apron here. So it is still a problem. Please don't feed the deer, which feed the moles, voles, and mice. The second thing is, is that I'm proud to announce that uh, Lieutenant Pellin has been promoted to a crisis negotiator team leader so that when there's a hostage situation, uh, Lieutenant Pellin is one of the leaders of the team. Um, he reports to uh, a manager for the entire Downriver communities, but Ken is doing a terrific job on that, and the last number I had from him was eight saves. It is an important position. He's been highly trained. Ken has been with us for more than two decades and does a very, very good job. I'd also like to report that reserves um, for the month of December had 130 hours of time that they donated. And there was a total of 2,178 hours for all of 2019. They do a terrific job. They're able to help us with every kind of imaginable issue from downed power lines, directing traffic, all of those things that make this community safer and a better place for us to live. It's not just fire, it's not just police. We also have reserves that are out there. And uh, again, 2,178 hours is the equivalent of additional person per year doing that job. And they do it and do it very, very well. I wanna bring to your attention uh, some of the following uh, statistics, which I think are pretty telling. Um, for December of 2019, we had 40 calls for animal service. We had 18 alarms. There were 29 rescues. There were four fire. There were 76 911 calls. We had a total of 878 calls for the 31 days in December. I'd also like to note that uh, in the complaint and rest report, year to date property damage, we had 42 calls. For persons, 139 for the year. In miscellaneous 398 matters that were all sent to the Detective Bureau. 42 for the year for property, 139 for person, and 398 for miscellaneous. I'd also like to direct your attention to the self-initiated patrol activity. In 2019, we had 42 OWIs. There were 121 parking violations, but 1,907 verbal warnings. There were 13 felony arrests, 91 misdemeanor arrests, 364 port reports were written, 117 accident investigations, and security notices totaled 308 for the year. I would also indicate that for 2019, we had 102 vehicle crashes, up from 68 year to date. Please be careful when you're driving out there. And a big part of our success in public safety is the fact that we have training and lots of training. For the month of December, we had 14 officers attend incident command system. We had officers attend the speed measurement training. 
human trafficking. We had officers that were involved in first aid, CPR, AED instructor, IT recertification. We had an officer that was trained, two officers actually, that were trained in blood-borne pathogens. Law enforcement dispatch recertification. We had two dispatchers that were involved in that. Emergency medical dispatch recertification. We had one dispatcher who was updated on that. An emergency fire dispatch recertification. Again, two more of your dispatchers were certified in that. And finally, I'd like to indicate that uh, with respect to our animal control, this year we had 644 complaints for service. We had 55 gross eel dogs that were picked up or surrendered. 45 dogs that were returned to their owners. Gross eel dogs adopted total 10. We had one, just one dog that was euthanized. The gross eel cats that were picked up or surrendered totaled 62. Cats that were returned to their owners were 15. We had 53 gross eel cats that were adopted. We had, again, just one cat that was euthanized. And we had eight animal bite reports that were taken up. Shelter fees totaled $1,189 for 2019. And donations by this community totaled $25,155.60. I just want to say thank you to the men and women in fire and to the reserves and again also to the fire department. Police, reserves, fire, it's a tremendous organization. It's a great business model. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Carl. Jim. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and go a little less uh, than that. Uh, no ZBA tomorrow. Uh, our next... Uh, Q&A meeting will be February 26th, and uh, we just uh, got uh, information today where there was a new study out, and uh, Grozeal uh, was ranked as the 38th, 38th safest city in the United States and second safest city uh, or community in Michigan. So uh, um, a big part of that is certainly our public safety. Uh, it's also our residents. Thank you, guys. Uh, we all we've all done a good job. And that's it. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mavasso. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me, Chief. You were a busy man tonight. You were a busy man tonight. <laughs> Turn your hearing aid up. <laughs> uh, no. Thank you to you and your department. Uh, I know that uh, I know that you work well with the uh, the police department. Um, I think that the presentation you gave tonight, uh, the accommodations that you that you passed out, is what I'm speaking of, uh, speaks a lot for your for your department for both departments. Uh, it goes a long way. Um, I I don't know how, I don't I don't you know I just don't know what else to say to you and your and your and your crew. Um, Without you, uh, both sides of that department, of that, that public safety building, without you, uh, this township wouldn't be what it is. Um, we expect everything that we give you to be maintained, be working in working condition, so when the call comes in, you're able to make that call and take care of whatever the, the issue is. So uh, thank you. As well as Fire Marshal Beaudry. Big part of that team, isn't he? All right, thank you, guys. Edit, Edit Tom? Yeah, that, yes, that's it, sorry. <coughs> uh, Township Attorney? Uh, good evening. Um, I just have one quick comment tonight. Um, I asked um, Deputy, Deputy Chief Harden to stand up here with me and because in reality, he's handled every aspect of this. I'm here to speak and inform you what's going on. There have been some issues in the news lately and we felt it important to advise you. Um, there were some issues with performance related, issues identified with performance related issues and outside vendor regarding specific data ma master breath alcohol testing instruments. Um, maybe you've read about it and I know there were some big things in here. So um, as I indicated, Deputy Chief and, and the whole department's been right on top of this. We, we had one right in 
uh, the day after uh, we got notification it was in. So they've been right on top of this. But um, the Michigan State Police has identified six cases in Wayne County affected by those issues. We are not one of them. And I wanted to make that very clear. Um, our equipment has been recertified and placed back into service. So just simply want to advise you, the board, and the public of what's going on. Okay, thank you. Edward Drive. Dale? Thank you, Mr. Treasurer. A few items to report uh, this evening. Um, next township board meeting is February 10th. And the next community advisory group formulation meeting by the EPA for the McLeod site in Trenton is going to be February 13th, and that's in the community center behind the library off West Road. Um, the treasurer asked me to update um, the board regarding the uh, tennis center building. Uh, Friday morning, we had large amounts of ice and snow slide off the top barrel roof and hit the flat roof on the Grow Road side, um, putting holes in the roof in some spots, pulling, putting big buckles and breaking some of the substructures. Um, actually, the, uh, the chair and suggester will be there tomorrow morning. So we've had a cleanup crew in there um, and uh, a roof crew do some temporary patching and just to get the thing place cleaned up and keep the tenant open for business at this point in time but uh, whether or not there's going to be major repair or major rebuild we'll know that over the next probably week I would I would say so yeah, no one was injured thank goodness but it was very very wet if it, you guys recall we had a lot of ice and snow then a lot of rain and Everything was melting when those large pieces slid off and fell through. Kind of a beach. perfect storm. Normally, when it comes off that barrel, it will hit the first flat roof. It just literally came off that barrel and kept right on going. It fell 20 feet to the second flat roof and did a lot of damage. But thankfully, no one was injured, and uh, we're just very, very pleased of that. So. Thank you. And... The last meeting when we were talking about communication, I think a comment was made by a board member because I was approached by a resident following that meeting about the clerk or the township manager just giving a raise to one of the employees. And I just wanted to um, inform the public what had happened was in September of last year, we had our very first study session on communication reorganization. Um, Clerk O'Connor and I put a memo together with, I think, a half dozen bullet points. And we had suggested that we do an additive to the employee at the time. And when we left that study session, um, I recall asking, so by um, you know, basic consensus, I'll move forward in this, in this um, um, manner, and I did so. And I, I following that meeting, sent finance... Uh, uh, um, the uh, instructions to give that employee a temporary raise. And the reason I wanted to bring it up was when a resident approached me and said, I understood it by at the meeting, some of the discussion, that you and the clerk gave a raise to someone without any approvals or authorities. And I just wanted to go on record to remind the public I included. <laughs> and and it, that's, the, that's the process um, when we're reevaluating um, um, job descriptions so and then bridges I will try to give a very brief update um, the, the, the simple answer is we don't have any dates yet phase two the bids were open right before Christmas they're still being reviewed phase three is being designed uh, they have um, I don't know I would say they're probably 80 90 percent there on the design but they're reviewing with all of the other agencies, all of the other utility companies, and so on and so forth, uh, and finalizing those plans. And I think uh, they'll probably plan on bidding those over the next several months. The plan is still to do the bridge work 
and possibly phase three of the overpass all at the same time so that it can limit the closure to one, but it might be longer. Again, <laughs> that is the latest update. And um, as soon as we know, we will we, we'll be screaming it from um, every communication angle we have to let everyone know what, what is done. Dale, I just, I just want to add so people understand it's not just Wayne County. The state's heavily involved in this. They're the ones, uh, in fact, the bid and the reason it's not done is the state, not the county. So I know everybody always wants to jump on Wayne County and blame them for everything, but the state's heavily involved in this. They have a lot of say. It's their, their, that's where the money's coming from. So, uh, um, but uh, ultimately, we do want this job to be done right rather than quick. So... Uh, well, I Bear with us. And I suppose one thing about the timing right now, it still leaves the possibility open for all the work to take place at one time. At one time, if, if anything positive is coming out of it. So, <laughs> yeah. with that, thank you very much. Bill, quick question, if I may. Uh, update on the East River Bridge that goes to Hickory. Um, that's expected to begin within the next several weeks, depending on the ice and the weather. We'll probably start mobilization soon, but I would say with another 30 days or so. Thanks, Thanks Dale. Thank you. All right, next is public comment. Any item, three minutes, Woody? Woody Clark, Park Lane. I want to thank Chief uh, Duncan and his crew for pulling me out of the house. Thank you very much. <laughs> Got a license for that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Any other public comment? Chip? Can I say one thing? Sure. I talked to Woody, and uh, Woody indicated to me that he fell, so that's why. Uh, they had to go to his house, and he's using the walker because he fell, not because he's old. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Snyder, Rucker Road. Mr. Bundy, last meeting we had talked about you had three different commissions. You're paid for all three. One of them. No, no, but no. Wrong again. Uh, they, you know, you're. I'm sorry. They are all. all one, one of them, the state mandates that the ZBA pays that commission. Right. The other two are. On are being paid by the township for those commissions. Well, um, the, yeah, the one one commission is never met. So okay, no, but it's still on, but it's still there it's for when they there. do when they do meet. And it was approved by the board. How, however, other commissions are not being paid for Correct. what they do. Is there any discussion amongst the board or amongst you to either have all the commissions paid or to have those two commissions not be paid? No, that there any reason been. why not? Why should there be? Why should those commissions be paid, be paid because, while the other ones are not? Because long ago, those commissions, by previous boards, they I believe put the that last in. time I looked, which was a 2005 stuff, so shows that the DPS does not get paid. And you are correct on that, also, uh, Mr. S uh, Snyder, and uh, uh, that is a conflict within the code, which will be taken care of. Okay, I will probably bring that up at the next meeting or yeah, whenever. Hopefully, hopefully at the next meeting it will be taken care of. Okay, Madam Clerk, um, as far as um, commissions go with absenteeism, we, I brought up at the last meeting what, what we can do to make our um, public officials responsible showing up to the meeting. Um, I don't know if that's something that you can work on prior to the next um, board taking place. But as far as who's responsible to report to either you or to Brian when a commissioner or a um, liaison to that doesn't show up, whose responsibility is that? Usually it's the commissioner or the liaison themselves or the board member that report to either the supervisor or township manager. Okay. Um, when it comes to one of the township commissions, usually the commissioner or the liaison will report that they expect to be absent to the um, uh, department head 
or the chairperson of that particular commission. Okay, the reason I bring it up is we have one, one particular commissioner, one of the commissions has shown up to, I believe, four meetings in the last three years. And I believe that person is, would be on your commission, Mr. Melveston. I'm very surprised as, as detail-oriented as you are with everything else, you haven't brought it to their attention. So hopefully you'll be able to do that soon. Thank you. Madam right. Clerk. Right, Madam Clerk. Madam Clerk. Was it just suggested that I've only made three meetings in the last? No, it was, it was someone on your commission. Someone on my commission. It was not suggested by me. No, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that. I'm not suggesting that. I was, it was just, it was kind of an in, incoherent uh, s a statement, and I, I, I was missing it. So I, was, I thought I'd ask you for clarification. I think some, uh, just to answer Mr. Snyder's question to our new um, <coughs> meeting software, the Civic Web uh, will actually or is actually tracking absences so that residents will be able to see um, which commissioners, which liaisons, which board members, et cetera, attended which meetings. All right. Yeah, and yet the other thing, uh, I, I realize this is uh, a temporary position for you, but under public comment, it's strictly public comment. It's not a question and answer I didn't period. Answer. Oh, well, no, I mean, but they, the questions were coming. They, they were questions that were coming at us, uh, uh, certainly to Mr. Bundy. So, uh, but it is right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I just want to clarify that as well. That's fine. All right. Uh, hearing nothing, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Got a motion. And second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Almost broke my record. Not quite. <laughs>